We're going to begin with our third presentation uh, from Jaron So and Chris Grant today. You're Chris, some, you've just Chris Sheridan and Chris, Chris Grant Sheridan, at the moment. Yes. Right. Changing. Changing names. It's an interesting time. So Chris Grant and Jaron So from Voda, which is a new app that you'll have access to in your um, packs. Um, and I think it's a really very exciting project. I've been able to see the development of a bit of this over the last uh, month or two, or a couple of months, and I think it's really worth us um, giving them a chance to talk about the work that they're doing with that, and I think you'll find it a useful resource for your, your clients. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Can you, can you all hear me okay? Great. So I am uh, Chris Sheridan. You may see me somewhere as Chris Grant. I am currently changing my name, hence it popping up as yeah, different names in different places. Uh, so sorry for that confusion. Um, so I use they, them pronouns. Um, and for those of you who may need a visual description of me, I'm a white, non-binary person with short brown curly hair. I'm wearing a cream and yellow cardigan over a tan t-shirt with cream trousers. I'm a trans neurodivergent accredited psychotherapist and founder of The Queer Therapist. I'm here today as lead psychotherapist for VODA, the LGBTQIA plus mental wellness app. So we're building VODA to provide a more accessible, more affordable, and more queer mental health app as an additional support for those in our community who are seeking therapy. So I've been working with the LGBTQIA plus community across the NHS, third sector, and my own private practice for over 10 years now. So my specialism lies in working with GSRD people, particularly those who are also neurodivergent. I'm also an accredited member of the BACP, the World uh, Professional Association for Transgender Health, the European Professional Association for Transgender Health, and the Gendered Intelligence Network for therapists and counselors. I'd like to now introduce you to Jaron, founder and CEO of Voda, who joins me here today. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Jaron. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm the founder of Voda. For those of you who need a visual description of me, I am a cis gay man of Singaporean descent. I have short, dark, spiky hair, and I'm wearing a blue jacket with a green polo shirt. Um, as you might know now, so Voda is a self-guided therapy app. And we work with leading queer psychotherapists like Chris themselves to design gender and sexuality affirming programs for our community. So we're built entirely by and for the queer community, and our approach is rooted in the LGBT lived experience. So our unique programs, unlike any other app, we're helping users cope with the challenges of living in a heteronormative and cisnormative society. Um, as for who I am, my little personal story about who I am, I am not a therapist. Um, I think I might be the only non-therapist in the room today, um, but I've always been working in tech and startups. So I started my first uh, startup at e-commerce company back when I was a student at the London School of Economics. And I have 70 years of experience in product and growth uh, with a big focus on product design and product management. And I've experience with venture fundraising for my previous companies, and I am also a member of the World Economic Forum's Global Shapers community. Um, personally, I struggled a lot with being gay as a kid growing up in the very conservative Singapore, um, and that's led to a lot of internalized stigma. Um, but before I go further into that, I want to talk about the community that we're working with, our community, and why we're here today. So we're here today because LGBT people are in a mental health crisis. So anyone can face mental health challenges, but being a part of our community, as you know, brings with it unique challenges. So mental health issues such as depression, um, anxiety, trauma, and substance misuse can affect anyone, but we know that they're more common amongst our community. To be clear, it doesn't mean that being queer means you have mental health issues, but there are some things that we go through on a daily basis that can make us more susceptible to mental health conditions. To give you an idea, a recent study by Stonewall found that over the previous year, 
half of queer people have experienced depression, two thirds have experienced anxiety, and that gay and bi men are four times more likely to attempt suicide than our heteronormative counterparts. The issues are also more pronounced for our trans friends and family. Two thirds of trans people had experienced depression in the past year, with close to half having societal thoughts. So this horrific statistic is just a people iceberg as well, because this, right, these issues of homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, they're not just locally, but globally as well. So what these unique challenges tells us that is that traditional forms of mental health are often less equipped to help LGBT people. And that's where Voda wants to come in. I struggled a lot of being gay as a kid, and what had helped me was therapy. Uh, it helped me gain a self-awareness of how my past was showing up in my present, the issues I had with appearing femme or appearing gay. Um, one of my earliest memories was being coached how to walk by my parents with my aunties because I was walking too girly, so I'd just be walking, I'd be walking, I'd be walking. And for a long time, even as a young teen or an out gay man around 18 and 19, I had big issues with men who are pure femme because I saw in them what I was repressing in myself. But also having seen many of my peers struggle with similar issues like I did, anxiety, um, depression, trauma, at times, even substance misuse, I set up to build Boda with a team of psychotherapists led by Chris. So while there is a large number of mental health apps out there that is responding to the needs of a community, but there's nothing quite like Boda which is queer specific. So Boda has been built with uh, evidence-based therapy, so GSRD principles and intersectionality from the get-go. So our team ranges across the gender, sexuality, and diversity spectrum, as well as race, disability, and neurodivergence. And crucially, VODA is made exclusively by and for our, our community. As a resource, this means that we're not afraid to dive into issues that our community uniquely faces. So things like um, sex, body image issues, gender dysphoria, internalized stigma, and queer culture. But why do I think this is important? Well, like Jaron, a huge part of my professional practice is about providing a service that wasn't available to me when I was growing up. I'm sure this is true of many of us in the room today. When I was a teenager accessing psychological therapy services, I kept coming up with the same problem. I don't see myself mirrored in these spaces. I don't see representation and that lack of that, that sense of belonging in these spaces was missing. So I fundamentally believe that queering psychotherapy involves rethinking how we disseminate psychoeducational resources, both in person and online, and finding alternative ways to address the health disparity our community faces. Which is why when Jaron approached me about joining the VODA team with a mission to make queer mental health accessible, I couldn't say no. There's no denying that we are living in a digital age where access to and the use of, smart, uh, the use of apps, smartphones, watches, and, uh, and more permeate our daily lives. There is a much broader conversation happening around the positive and negative impacts of the prevalence of technology in our Western society on our mental health. But whichever side you come down on, it's clear that with the prevalence of other wellness apps, such as Headspace, Bloom, Talkspace, the use of mental health, app, mental health apps are here to stay. What excites me about VODA in this context is the practical and accessible possibilities of having an immediately available, evidence-based, queer-specific space to check in with alongside traditional forms of therapy. So this is not as an alternative to one-to-one -one therapy, but in addition to and alongside. So creating a new pathway for clients to gain psychoeducational knowledge without having to wade through harmful narratives and practices that are centered around white, cisgendered, and heteronormative oppressive systems, the systems that Brendan was discussing earlier. But that's not the only reason I knew I had to get involved. 
So my own practice, The Queer Therapist, was founded in late 2020, during the pandemic and in response to the growing UK trans healthcare crisis. It's a UK-based social enterprise dedicated to providing GSRD therapy and neuro-affirming therapy, both nationally and internationally. It's grown from strength to strength over these last couple of years with an insurmountable demand from clients, development and launch of a global consultancy that feeds any profits back into sliding scale fees and free places. So I, like many of you, have had to shut my wait list at a year and a half and still receive roughly 20 referrals a day. I bring this up because for so many of our community, access to LGBTQIA plus therapists, any therapist for that matter, comes with an extremely long wait list. Often getting bounced between practitioner recommendations or sitting on waiting lists for months at a time. And that's without getting into the current availability of NHS provision. So I am a huge support of the NHS and think that it is something that we should all fight to save in this country. However, I can deeply believe in the importance of saving the NHS and at the same time hold the knowledge and first-hand experience having been a psychotherapist in a clinical psychology department and try to get gender affirming therapy through it that the NHS is not supporting our community right now in the way we would hope. Particularly, although not exclusively, when it comes to supporting and resourcing the treatment of queer mental health. So we all know the waiting list to be seen by a psychotherapist on the NHS can range between 12 weeks to 18 weeks and upwards. And that's just for an initial assessment in many cases. And then there is a high likelihood that you will be seen by a cisgendered, heterosexual therapist with little to no cultural competence. Often, as we know, those who are seen are put onto six to eight sessions of short-term therapy and then cut off. Then there are those of us who seek help, knowing our mental health is worsening, but are not deemed ill enough for the NHS to take us on. I could also bring in here the high rates of misdiagnosis amongst the neurodivergent population, who often move through the system being presented with barrier after barrier. I myself have ADHD and navigating the NHS diagnosis process was a nightmare in terms of paperwork and yeah, organization. So we can't talk about the current pressure on the NHS and all mental health services in this country without also naming how the current cost of living crisis is escalating every stressor tenfold. For many in our community, the prospect of waiting on another NHS waiting list or being able to find the regular cost for therapy feels insurmountable. Even when, when many of us who work exclusively as therapists for our community offer free and sliding scale places. So it's clear to me that traditional therapy models and the UK's current mental health provision is not enough support for our, our queer community. And, uh, and we really find ourselves in uh, a challenging, a challenging place with huge demand and uh, a lack of a lack of service provision. So there may be wrap, wraparound support that's offered by other apps out there, but the current digital offer for our queer community has been sorely missing. So our mission at Boda is to provide evidence-based, GSRD affirming digital therapy programs that draw on an intersectional approach. So no other app does this. What we're developing at Voda is, we hope, the next iteration of accessible digital therapy, and one that does not dismiss traditional therapy models, but instead supports these by offering instant, accessible, and tailored programs built on lived experience alongside queer expertise. But rather than standing here and telling you about all the benefits and functions of it, it's, we thought we'd show you instead. Yeah, so um, I'll give you all a sneak peek of the app. You can also download it um, on your phones. So, yes. So, absolutely. So, Boda has been designed to be user friendly with a clean and discreet queer aesthetic. So, if you haven't already, um, 
you know, you're welcome to take out your phone. Sorry, we're only out on iPhone right now, but Android will be out in a few weeks. We love both Android and iPhone users equally. Um, we just see some bugs, we have to fix. Um, but um, for the pink uh, therapy conference attendees, we actually just mentioned that you have access to both our premium and free content uh, for three months. You just have to take a photo of the QR code, which is on the screen, but it's also on the brochure that will bring you to the voter uh, .co slash claim, which will allow you to claim a free premium copy of the app. But if you'd like to play with it on your iPhone right now, there are some free programs you could try as well. You just have to go to the App Store and search Voter LGBT, and it should show up. Uh, yeah, and we'll send the code to you in a few days. We just have to manually generate the code from the App Store. Uh, now I'll showcase how the app works with a quick demo. So the first thing I want to highlight is that everything from our logo to the programs are designed with a queer lens, but it's also designed to be discreet. So we recognize that some of our users might not be publicly out yet, and they're still dealing with issues with their own gender and sexual identity. Um, and as you can see, the logo here for Voda, it's very simple and clean, and it represents how we're all different. The different shapes represents how we're all different and, which, and the difficulty we have fitting into the boxes that society tries to put us in. And when users first log into the app, they can access a daily information. So anyway, uh, when users first log into the app, there's a free daily information which is aimed at helping them raise greater self-awareness of their own emotional history and also tackles some of life's issues from a queer perspective. But the bread and butter of Voda's program really, uh, Voda's app is really our self-guided digital therapy programs. So users can access free taster programs such as uh, dealing with low moods, dealing with anxiety, and one of our programs is called uh, Overcoming Internalized Stigma, which looks into internalized homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia. All our programs are audio-based. Uh, you put headphones on and you go to the different programs. We have chosen queer voice actors for our programs with both, U with both UK and US accents because we recognize this is where we're going to reach the most of our people uh, in the beginning. Um, as we grow, we'll also have a greater diversity of voices represented on the platform, and we're also looking to explore video programs. So we also have specific programs aimed at different communities. So for example, we have a dating apps program series, which looks into dating as a cis or bi gay man, and looks into toxicity on apps like Grindr, but also we have dating apps programs geared at people who are trans and non-binary and also for the Sapphic community. So we combine our programs with cognitive journaling. So questions that are designed with the therapist to build with a self-awareness of how these issues are showing up in our lives. So this is really inviting the user to introspect and understand how certain issues are affecting their lives. And in the future, we'll also introduce greater personalization features. So um, features such as allowing users to insert their pronouns and also recommending programs based on the daily check-in. So how are you feeling today? If you're feeling anxious, here are some programs or anxiety. Um, we also have lots of different queer-centered topics that other apps would not address. So for example, we have um, a series coming out called Managing Come Downs, which looks into coping with the effects of substance misuse but in a non-judgment way, non-judgmental way that's not aimed at inducing shame in the user. So we have a program that's focusing on self-care habits, uh, sleep hygiene, and also signposting essential resources and community groups and nonprofits. Um, intersectionality is also really important to us. So we're working in a series with um, all the different therapists that's working with us uh, that looks into the specific challenges of being queer and the other, the other identities we have. So for example, being black and queer, being East Asian and queer, but also looking into topics like being Catholic and queer, being autist, autistic and queer. And these are all written in, in conjunction with uh, therapists that have that lived experience as well. In terms of pricing, to keep Voda accessible, we're pricing Voda at 799 pounds a month and 26 pounds a year. 
we're aiming to keep the programs accessible. So we have 24-7 on-demand access to all of Boulder's programs for users. And we, have reg we will regularly add programs to both free and premium um, sections. Privacy is also really, really important to us. So all your entries uh, on Boulder are safe and secure, they're encrypted, and no data is shared with third parties. So if you wrote about something in your entries, you're not going to get an ad on Instagram asking you to buy new shoes. <laughs> so I think Chris is going to talk about more about the titles that are on Google. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about our, our programming um, and, and really how we have chosen the topics and what our methodology is. So from concept to creation and vetting. So to be really clear, we have not designed this app to replace or undercut one-to-one -one therapy, but have focused the program creation on providing accessible, evidence-based set of resources, prompts, and guided exercises that can not only help bridge the gap between identifying needing help and actually getting one-to-one -one support, but also as a tool to build understanding, awareness, and, and provide access to psychoeducational tools. So helping our community to better understand, manage, and articulate what they are going through. So as we've touched on, there are a number of high profile mental health apps, some of you which you may already recommend to your clients. So Headspace, Calm, for instance. Many of these provide a one size fits all approach to mental health and expect a baseline of self-awareness, psychoeducational knowledge, and safeguarding to be provided by the user. So when we started to think about how to approach creating an evidence-based app for our community, we kept coming back to the same dis discussion point. How do we create something that is useful for the glorious, intersectional, and enormously broad reality that makes up our queer community? So we may share a common thread in our intersectional identities, but we can't expect everyone to know, sorry, but we are a very, a hugely complex, hugely varied and an undefinable group. And we can't expect everyone to know what is going to work best for them. So essentially what we're grappling with here is how to make this app intersectional and person-centered in terms of its offerings, not just at design level. So we knew we wanted to take an integrative approach from the start. And this is something that is core to my work at The Queer Therapist. As unsurprisingly, different people will resonate and respond to things like CBT rather than psychodynamic psychotherapy. And those responses will shift and change in a person over the course of therapy, depending on what's coming up. We believe that, well, in the main, at Voda, we draw on therapies that are particularly suited to GSRD clients. So they are therapies that are first and foremost led by the individual's experience and expertise. So these tried and tested therapies include acceptance commitment therapy, narrative therapy, systems therapy, and compassion focus therapy. For our more psychoeducational programs that are designed to build user understanding and awareness, we draw on polyvagal theory, neuroqueer theory, cognitive behavior therapy, schema therapy, as well as dialectical behavior therapy. So the beauty of an integrative approach is that it means there will always be some therapeutic modalities that land for some users over others and we are able to help the user identify what best suits them. So let's talk about safeguarding briefly. As a team, we've been working on developing a bank of programs for over six months now, discussing what key themes arise when working with GSRD clients and our community, as well as sense checking what the limitations of some of them are through an app. So I have to be really clear that I'm aware that a huge, that there is a huge vulnerability in, in our queer community when it comes to mental health, and that safeguarding is a top priority. So I vet each and every program that's released, and as a team, we have consciously decided to develop programs that are aimed at users with low to moderate mental health difficulties. So we emphasize this throughout, the, throughout use of the app, 
and signpost to crisis support services where needed. We do, of course, recognize that anyone can download and access the program in our app, which is why we have made the conscious decision to keep the focus of our programs on building psychoeducational awareness and understanding to help the user build their own strategies and develop a, instead of deep exploration work. So we started programming topics that covered the key GSRD themes. So this included internalized stigma, minority stress, hypervigilance, rejection, shame, low self-esteem, anxiety, and low mood. And with all of these programs, we have taken an intersectional approach. So being able to consider our different audiences has been key to the rollout of our current set of introductory programs. And as we move forward and begin to release more challenging material, this will become ever more important. So body image, for example, is a really complex topic and one that will be approached very different, in a very different way, depending on whether you are gender questioning, trans or cisgendered. So as we've seen in the demonstration, each program signposts to a specific group of people. For example, within our dating app and mental health series, we offer programs from, as Jaron said, a trans perspective, a sapphic perspective, and a gay, bi, uh, cisgender male perspective. Creating programs in this way is not an attempt to silo or separate out our community, but rather to better respond to the different needs and experiences. So we believe that signposting each of our programs to a specific audience, be that to other trans folk, sapphic folk, or gay bi men, we can help personalize the strategies and approaches built by each of our users and continue to center lived experience in, in the work. With that in mind, I want to discuss Voda's intersectional programming a little bit more. So we know that a queer intersectional mental wellness app cannot just address issues around gender, sexuality, and relationship diversity, but must also address uh, issues around class, neurodivergence, race, ability, and social economic status. There are many ways in which we incorporate intersectionality throughout our programming. So at the core, our team of therapists represent many different intersecting identities. We also evaluate our programs and continually reassess whose voice is missing from this space. As a, as a fully LGBTQIA team, we know that historically the queer community face barriers to accessing healthcare. Experiences of stigma, discrimination and violence have resulted in health disparities and negative health outcomes. Our vision at Boda is to reimagine mental wellness for queer people by taking this intersectional approach. So this not only means considering different gender, sexuality and relationship diversities, how they intersect and influence one another, but also how this impacts our sense of belonging and how this intersects with other identities. So often queer focus organizations have maybe little to no knowledge of, for example, race issues. And this can lead to racist attitudes and practices permeating the organization's services. So then there's accessibility, which is something that Jaron has touched upon already. But I want to emphasize as a neurodivergent person, myself, working from a social model of disability in all of my work, that holding an anti-ableist lens across the programming is key. So essentially our aim in all of our programming is to create a psychologically safe space that centers an intersectional approach and respects every part of our user's identity. So a core part of our methodology is to continuously evaluate our programs, process, user experiencing and safeguarding in order to ensure clinical efficacy, uh, embedded intersectionality and due diligence. So this leads us on to uh, some of our early results. I'll hand over to you, Jared. Yes, so before we officially launched the Voda app on the App Store, which happened earlier this week, we spent quite a few months working with our beta community to make sure that our programs are not just safe, but also we could see some indicators of effectiveness. 
So as with most new pieces of tech, trialing is a core part of our methodology. Um, throughout this process, we've been testing the programs with over 500 LGBT plus users. Um, and our voters intent with the small study that we did this year from June to August um, is to see if our programs are effective in improving or reducing symptoms of anxiety and depression. So for, for this study, we followed uh, 15 participants who are 18 plus, who self-identify as part of the LGBT community and who present themselves with uh, low to moderate mental health difficulties. So across four weeks, these four participants would use the voter app, and after using the voter app, they will answer a survey that tracks the uh, G87, which is the clinical symptoms of anxiety, and PHQ9, which tracks the uh, symptoms of depression. So they did four programs, uh, and the four programs are as follows. So the first one on critical self-talk, the second on overcoming internalized stigma. We also included a mindfulness program, loving kindness meditation, and the last program focuses on people pleasing. So each week after doing the programs, listening to the programs, and doing the cognitive journaling exercises, we are then asked to complete the survey. And these are the results that we have found. So as you can see, over the four weeks, we see a significant uh, downward drop in symptoms of anxiety and depression in our early users. This is a small sample size, so it's not quite a medical study, but it did give us confidence of a really good early indicator of how effective um, mobile-based self-guided therapy can be. And what we really see is up, you, so, you really don't start to see the effect of the two weeks of using the app. And the key takeaways we've seen from the study that uh, we see an average reduction in clinical symptoms of anxiety by 43% and 40% for the, um, symptoms of depression. Not all users experience benefits. So for some of our uh, users who identify as part of the community, um, there are ongoing issues of anxiety, depression, issues with gender dysphoria. Um, and as you could see from the graph previously, often the mental states do fluctuate. So what we see is around 78% of users who did um, experience lower anxiety after four weeks, and 85% who experienced lower depression scores after four weeks. So this is just a very small starting study, and it's just the beginnings of our research. So we're, very, we're a very small bootstrap team, and, but these pos this positive outcomes are really highly encouraging for us. So we're delighted to be at the very beginning of our public rollout of our app. However, that does not mean we have completed the work. So as these positive results come in, we are continuously tweaking, questioning, and adjusting our programs, user experience, and functionality of the app to ensure we are delivering the best possible support. So we see it as fundamentally important to seek out feedback from as wide a range of users in our community as we possibly can. So as, as you may have seen, alongside our ongoing clinical studies, we are asking for direct feedback from uh, the app's users. We have a built-in survey on our home screen with a clear invitation. We would love to hear from you. And that invitation absolutely extends to everyone here in the room today. We would love to hear what you think and how you have found our programs. So as we have outlined today, there is a significant gap when it comes to evidence-based queer-specific digital mental wellness support, not to mention a very real need for accessible, affordable, and instantly available resources. So our aim is to complement existing psychotherapy options for queer people with low to moderate mental health issues and provide psychoeducational resources to help support our community to better understand themselves, their mental health, and develop improved mental health strategies. So we have designed this app exclusively by and for our queer community to help alleviate some of the demand from public, third sector and private services. So I'm going to stop here as that's all we have time for. But I want to thank you all so much.
for listening and taking the time to join us here today. It's a really, it's a huge privilege to be given this platform to talk about our work, the app and our process. And on that note, I want to say a huge thank you to Pink Therapy for inviting us and bringing us all here today. And uh, yeah, over to you, Darren. Yes, so thanks everyone. Um, huge thank you to Pink Therapy for having us. Uh, please download to build the app. I would love to hear what you think. Um, please reach out through the form on the website for your treatment subscriptions. Um, I, not just, I don't just want to hear if you think it might be good, but particularly what you don't like about the app, because we are, we are at a very early stage. We just launched. And the aim really is to create something that serves the needs of our community. And we're not afraid to go where other apps you know, don't dare to go. We're really building a queer app. And I would love your honest, very honest feedback. Um, if you want to hear more about our work, here's uh, our details. But I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. We'll be around today, so please feel free to come over and have a chat with us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you very much. I think it's a very exciting opportunity to, 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 to deliver therapy, therapeutic services, if you like, or therapeutic information outside of, the, outside of the consulting room and make stuff a lot more available. So I think, it's, I think it's a really exciting project. I'm wondering if anyone has comments, questions? Oh, the room has quite a few. Okay, we'll go there and then we'll come to your room. Hiya, um, I work in relationships and sex education and I'm wondering if there is an age at which it becomes uh, available or whether there, it's like inappropriate for a particular age or if it's something I can recommend to uh, young people under the age of 18. Yeah, our actual rating is 17 plus at the moment, but we do talk about certain things, which is why I think our app is 17, 18 plus, mm. because we do dive into issues. We have an upcoming title one, for example, Beyond Heteronomic Relationships. We talk about polyamory, um, which is kind of going beyond heteronormative and cisnormative norms. So I imagine some people might be quite uncomfortable uh, with that. So I don't have an answer for you just yet, but I do think most of our content is geared towards 18 plus. Okay, thank you. Cameron? Yeah. Hi, this, um, so this, this is from the people on Zoom. Okay. Um, just want to, they want to applaud you for doing this, because obviously it doesn't exist. A few specific questions. Um, will Voda be intersex inclusive? And that's from Valentino. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, we are very much LGBTQIA. So we have programmes coming out that are um, focus on intersex issues, also focus on asexuality. Um, one of our advisors as well is an uh, intersex consultant. So, yes. Brilliant. Um, this is from a number of people, so I've, I've merged them together. Uh, confused by the dating app definitions, because you talk about being intersectional, but then you've got like gay by men and trans, and last time I looked, trans gay men existed. So mm. what, why have you done that, and what's your thinking there? <laughs> so I think, so if, so I think trans men could also use the gay by men uh, programs. The aim is not to exclude you from certain things, but for example, for the trans and non-binary programs, we talk about the challenges of dating as a trans man, as a non-binary person, because there are certain responses that you do get on dating apps, um, or you might be excessively objectified. So those content are developed specifically with trans and non-binary binary therapists. So the aim is not to exclude, but I definitely recognize, and I would love to know how we could improve and test with those users. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. And this came up quite a lot. Why Voda? Because it makes people think of Voda. I know. Um, I just really like the word, but yes. But uh, Voda actually means water. Uh, and I really like that. Voda means water in, in Slavic languages, and I think even in ancient Sanskrit. I love the idea of having something that um, kind of nourishes you every day. So I think something that is common in all of us as well, in the common humanity. And I also just love the work because it gave me the ability to do the logo like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Bona Tavada, actually, which is Palari for good to see. <laughs> if we reclaim some of our gay language, ancient gay languages, mm -hmm. Palari. Mm. Hi, thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to see an app 
like this that's um, being developed. <clears throat> so mild, mild to moderate difficulties. Is there a function within the app if someone was to type out self-harm, suicide, something like that, to catch that and throw some crisis numbers at them? Yes. Yes. So we've been having a lot of discussions about uh, essentially trigger words that will um, essentially uh, yeah, essentially signpost the user to certain resources. We're also thinking about how we can do that to tailor it to dependent, dependent on actually where a person is based. So if they're obviously in the UK, um, we need to be able to provide them UK specific resources. Um, but yeah, we're going to have literally a set of uh, trigger words that will yeah, uh, alert. So touching upon that, it will be consent driven as well. So speaking with early users, some people are uncomfortable, even if it's an anonymous AI scanning through the entries. And our uh, incoming technical co-founder has uh, deep expertise in data science and AI. And it is possible, but there is something about interaction with an app if you feel like well, it's almost like an intrusion of privacy if you write something in your entry and then it comes out with something back to you. So that's something we have to balance quite carefully. Yeah, because I think I think that's the tension, is it, about not shutting down people's ability to talk about things that are really tricky, and also safety netting and uh, managing the risk of attached. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hi again. Recognizing it's an amazing thing. Um, you talked about A and inclusion of A. I'm very aware that we're at a GSRD conference how much around the relational diversity is intersecting with each of those aspects unfortunately i'm android so i couldn't have a look at it so are you asking how much can, can you just repeat that are you asking how much is relationship diversity going to be Spe included yeah. specifically how much are you include how much are you including the relational diversity? So non uh, ethical non-monogamy yeah. or um, a relational yeah. in other ways? Thank you. So, so far, um, for those of you who are able to access, and you'll see it when you do have access, so actually every single program that actually touches on relationships talks about relationship diversity and talks about different relationship structures. Mm -hmm. So that is, I would say, normalized from the get-go. Yeah, so our programs, we wouldn't just say, how would you, what feelings do you have about your partner? We wouldn't assume that. Yeah, we talk about multiple partnered yeah. or, yeah, um, like that. But definitely something we want to explore further as well along the line. Well, just hang on. You have to wait, please. Sorry. Really quickly, can I throw in, does that include kinks that we want to know? Uh, yes. So we talk mainly about kinks in some of the programs, but we do not yet have a full program of slurring the kinks. Um, but elements of that could be found, for example, in overcoming internalized stigma. What internalized shame do I have about sex? But if you're just describing like your relationship style, can you just put your relationship style as kink? I suppose, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.